Then it was James's turn, and because his Lambo was very long and very hard to see out of, we waited for him to go and fetch it, and then helped him out a little bit. You evil man! That's brilliant! That's genius! About that much? Right, ready, James? Right, Three, two, one, go! go. He's, yeah, he's moving. That's not a very good angle. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that kind of set the tone, really. Touch! Curbs. Touch! Doesn't fit! Another touch. Two minutes, 14, and he's having another crack at it. Another touch. He's curbed the wheel. Another touch. <laughs> Curbed. Touch. Oh, God! Curbed. Oh, dude. <laughs> 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 Did I do that? Well, James, I'm three minutes. I'm really sorry. 20 seconds. And carnage brought to the town of Marlborough. So far, we'd only covered 50 miles, and things were going badly. James had broken down more times than Sienna Miller, and the tuppity noise in my Maserati was getting louder. How can it be so difficult to drive from Bristol to Slough? Jeremy, he was banging on about the tappets, but that is something much, much more serious. That's the whole bowels of the engine disintegrating. The one dial that was working this morning, oil pressure, now says naught. What genuinely scares me at the moment is if the engine stops, I lose all braking. And I don't mean if it gets worse, I mean it goes completely. So, would I make it to the finishing point at the lap dancing bar? 60 miles to go. I'm going for a gear change. It's worked! But then... I'm in. I've lost brakes. I've lost brakes. <laughs> uh, just a small technical point. Your engine didn't cut out. It disintegrates. James, <laughs> could you not, <laughs> on my grief? It was like flying into a cloud in a small aeroplane. With bits of engine. Bits of engine striking the front of my car. I think, gentlemen... Um, you're out. I'm out. Yeah. James, do you know what? Yeah. Let's go, mate. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm still working. I'll follow you, yeah? Yeah. I'm running out of fuel. I can't so carry right, extra right. weight. Hey, Sorry. At the same time, we can go with public. Spectacularly, there's no way can James's Lambo make it. It's mine, it's in the bag. All I had to do was drive economically because, of course, we weren't allowed to refuel. Don't overtake, you fool! That's brilliant. That's put my red light on. Nevertheless, 20 miles later, we were still going. I'm in the centre of Reading in a bright yellow Ferrari with no fuel in it that could conk out to any minute. Right. Please don't go here, please don't go here, please don't go here. Traffic's building up. Bad for Hammond's fuel consumption, bad for my electrical supply. Amazingly, I made it through Reading, but then it really was time to clutch at straws. I discovered something. When I turn right, the needle moves up off the stop. So, if I keep turning right, I've got more petrol. Come on, Hammond, do the decent thing and run out of petrol. Come on, little Ferrari. 
frugal, just sit. Alan's miracle-powered car was beginning to worry me, but then, just 10 miles from our destination... What was that? What was that? That's coming out. Would you like me to keep her dancing girl warm for you? No, I'd like to give me a lift. You know the rules, mate. Sorry. I can't believe it. And so, with Top Gear presenters littering most of southern England, the Lamborghini soldiered on. The car that had started the day on the back of a tow truck, the car that had taken so much stick from Clarkson and Hammond, was the only one left running. All I need is enough electricity and enough petrol to get me to this peppermint rhinoceros place. Yes, I was just seven miles from Gentleman's Club Heaven. Smoking like hell. Just keep going, Carl. I'll let you come in with me. But then, just outside Slough. BBC Radio Berkshire. BBC Radio Berkshire. Travel. And time for the latest on the roads now. There's some news just coming in of some huge tailbacks on the A4 just to the east and of the And guess what was causing it? Yep, I was out as well. broke down as well. Yes, it did. And that means, essentially, in case you missed it, none of our £10,000 supercars could get us to a lap dancing bar in Slough. No. <laughs> no, I must say, I was hoping to end the evening in a rather different sort of hedge, but there we are. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, great respect, your engine explosion was absolutely spectacular. You're not joking. I've actually I collected the pieces off the road. I mean, look at this, OK? These are bits of the crankcase. It yes. blew a hole in the side of the engine. And look, that, my big end, ended up in a bucket. Oh, <laughs> that's just... not what you... No, it really was. It just showered your car, didn't it? With oh, all I could the hear it. Bang, bang, bang. <laughs> You're looking a bit smug, but yeah. I don't think you ran out of petrol, did you? No, what actually happened was a complete and catastrophic failure of all the engine electrics. All Thank of you. them gone. <laughs> yep. So, therefore, this is... This is useless, as useless as our cars, in fact. Absolutely. Uh, but no matter, we did end up with a Top Gear top tip, OK? Yes, you can buy a supercar for less than £10,000, but for the love of God, don't.